<laughs> Hello, happy Easter uh, on all that malarkey. Welcome back to Magathea Builder of Worlds and a Patreon inspired silver bayonet build. Okay, this is part two of my silver bayonet build for Kelly, the winner of the, the last Patreon competition that I ran all the way back in December. And the model is coming on really nicely. The model is here. We are at the point where, uh, well, uh, at the end of the last video, it didn't have a first floor, it didn't have a roof, it didn't have shed in the corner, it wasn't primed, all that kind of stuff. We're a lot further along now. It needs painting and putting together. This video is going to carry on immediately from where the last one left off. So, you know, the black bit will happen halfway through. Um, but we'll see how we go. I wanted to do this in one, but it was just going to be too big and sprawling. So it's a two-part video. If you've watched the first part already, stick around and watch the rest, see how it turns out. If you found this before you've seen the first part, then you'd be better off pressing pause again and watching the first part and finding out how it works, and then you can watch this bit, because it will just be sat here waiting for you patiently to press play. Um, if you just want to jump in straight to the end, to the saucy bit at the end, and see how it all pans out, then that's well done you. Excellent choice. Um, for those of you who don't know, this uh, piece, of mon the piece of scenery is being made uh, to be used Firstly, primarily in Joe's, if A McCullers, the Silver Bayonet uh, tabletop war game. It's a war game of Napoleonic Gothic horror. Uh, I've talked about it last time. This fantastic, gorgeous looking book from Osprey Games. Really nice. Still haven't had a chance to read all the rules. Um, but I do kind of fancy it. There's a bit of it that, you know, just tweaks and, 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 and flicks and, and kind of like winks and blinks at me. Um, if I could tear myself away from anthropomorphic kind of badgers and hares and that kind of thing and bloody great big war hammers and axes and, and, and killing people in, in, in a uh, strange world set in kind of like Albion and that kind of thing, I might just turn my hand to the silver bayonet. Um, I reckon it will be really good. However, this model is also, I'm trying to Keep it in mind that it's also going to be useful for pretty much, uh, well, most tabletop war games, to be quite honest. Anything that's uh, 16th century onwards, English Civil War, um, it could be used across different wars across Europe, World War One, World War Two, so bolt action, that kind of thing. Very British Civil War, um, yeah, it'll be really good for that kind of thing too. So um, it's, it's, I'm deliberately avoiding um, kind of things that, figure out one way or another fantasy items and that kind of thing keeping it fairly plain and simple and very very playable um this is being made for kelly in the states thanks mate uh your model will be with you soon um but right now we need to get on with the paint job so from that point of view um i'm going to stop prating away to my viewing audience um and i'm going to get on with the paint job remember Click like and subscribe, let me know what you think down below in the comments, all that kind of malarkey, and I'll see you at the end with a finished model. Although I am going to have to go and dig hard in my miniature collection to put some figures with it when I do the saucy bit at the end, because I don't have 28mm and Napoleonics, my Napoleonic figures are 40mm. Sorry. Uh, but I have got some models in mind that will be cool to dig out and put with this when it's done, when it's finished. But there's no point in me still talking, because it ain't bloody finished. I need to get painting. So, um, yeah. Uh, go away, go away, come back, come back when I'm, I'm kind of like, yeah, no, I'll just, I'll just paint. All right, okay, All right, go. Timey wimey wibbly wobbly thing. Let's paint the model. Right, so now we have uh, timber around most of the uh, building, window frames, wrecked first floor. Uh, well, that's the attic floor. That's the first floor there. It's got wrecked. I've put this beam in that now goes to the chimney on both sides and out to the back wall. I've put in some uh, roof beams here and here, which I'm now going to add uh, roof tiles to, uh, so I can get the actual main structure finished. I do need to do a little bit of filling in the chimney here. Uh, I still need to build the shed outside, but um, it's starting to look more and more like a ruined building. That's pretty cool. I mean, a lot of it is missing, but yeah, there's so there'd be so much rubble from this building. It should just be really be piled up, but um, I don't want to do that because you, know, you wouldn't be able to play over it so easily. So uh, um, just a few small piles of rubble. I think I'm going to live with. Then I need to sand out here. It will go over the flower beds, over the the, the vegetable beds. 
yeah, we're coming on. The whole thing needs sealing still, so. Um, but next job then, I think it's going to be to apply um, roof tiles. Going to be using these uh, roof tiles that I can't remember who they come from. I'll have to check it out. Put a link down below, maybe. I don't know. Was it TT? I can't remember who supplied them. TT Combat, I think. Um, but roof tiles are going to go over there like that. Layer those on. I might have the odd hole in the roof. But um, that'll be quite cool. So we're going to have a few bits of wrecked roof, um, which is which is pretty cool, uh, I think. I hope I hope these will work. I don't know whether I need to put a piece of thin cardboard on, first of all, which they can then take the roof tiles. I think it's probably going to be my best bet. Because uh, this is going to be way flimsy otherwise, because they're really kind of thin. So I think I need to find a couple of bits of thin card first to go over that. That means I can also have a hole in the roof here or here. Uh, but um, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so I've started to now put tiles onto my wreck roof. As you can see, I gave in and I used some breakfast cereal box to actually give it structure. Otherwise, it was just going to be too damn wobbly. Uh, but this shouldn't take too long. I'm leaving bits in there so characters can shoot out. Done the same around the other side. And then I've got to go up the other end and do the same at the other end of the model too. Uh, and then that's pretty much the structure done. Then all I need to do is get on and paint the damn thing. Oh, I'll do the back garden. I'll do the shed. I am done the hour though. I lie. Oh well. I was just out of interest. <laughs> just in case you didn't know. Yes, super glue, by the way, does melt XPS foam. Right, okay, if this is one of my first videos you've watched of mine, you might not be seen me using these this product. This uh, is the tiled roof coming on. It looks quite nice. Hole there, bits falling down. And this is me working on the other side at the moment. Uh, earlier on, I got the name of the uh, manufacturer of this stuff wrong. These are laser cut roof tiles from a company called War Bases. I've used them before. If you saw the Red Wall Abbey video, you would have seen them on use there and on other buildings too. On a lot of models, I like to cut out individual tiles, but for doing this kind of thing, um, where they would have been mass-produced kind of industrial revolution type things, um, I'm happy using this stuff. It does speed up the process. I can't remember how much they are. Um, a couple of quid a sheet, I think, but it's a lot of tiles and um, it saves an awful lot of time. So from that point of view, that's what we're going for. So I'm, I'm, I'm working my way in. I'll, I'll end up cutting some of the rough ones out of here. Uh, and then there is, on each sheet, you get at least one set of kind of double-sided. These are ridge tiles. You fold them over and they go over the top. Um, and they look pretty cool. So um, all you do, I've got quite a few attached already. The way I do it um, is to take my... Um, strip a ridge to, uh, of tiles in this case here yeah, I'm cutting them down and actually I'm sticking them on because I'm using doing such a small piece of roof I am actually using super glue here in other times I've used PVA or um, uh, Bostic all purpose adhesive but I'm only using small amounts of uh, uh, glue here so I'm using the super glue get a quick bond, get this job done quickly and then all we do is line them up stick them on and uh, try and get them so they overlay each other properly. Um, get that staggered effect of proper tiling. Uh, and it's it's very, very effective. What I tend to do, is, as you can see, is this kind of routine where I've got lots of it lying over the edges. And I'm going to give that five, ten minutes to dry. And then I'll take a pair of clippers and I'll just clip straight the way up the side there. And I can use all that and move that over again. And the same on this side too. It's going to be pretty effective. And I know tiling makes it gorgeous, and I know it always looks great and all that. But I've got to say, even doing it with war bases tiles, I'm still bored with putting tiles on this model. Fortunately, I'm not tiling all of this roof here. Only this poxy little bit left to do. Ha uh ha! -huh, nearly there. Then I just got to make a shed. So that's the whole roof done, and a very very basic wooden shed stuck in a corner. Erect its roof so figures can go inside it and I'm going to do a bit of weathering and damage to the outside of it but that is now the structure complete um, I need to sand uh, the rest of the board 
and then seal everything with a Mod Podge coating and then we're going to be ready pretty much to paint. I'm probably going to do something about this line between the two bits of uh, 25mm XPS foam there just to fill that in because that will just niggle me otherwise but otherwise it's looking pretty good I hope that this is some um, kind of like what he had in mind when we were having the conversations about a ruined farmhouse that's pretty pretty ruinous that's not bad though I quite like it the main base now covered in a uh, mod podge this is for sand to go on to a texture to all the back of the garden and the like I'm using my mix of coral sand and gravelly stuff and I'm literally just going to scatter it all over um, I put sand I put glue uh, into the base of the building because that's fine because that's going to have all kinds of clot all over it as well this is basically my main texture most of the board and this way here that's going to offer me well sand will provide a number of different textures then everything else effects wise will come from paint colour to determine what's grass what's rubbish what's earth I'm going to go for this real overgrown look wrecked When this is dried, I will then well, podge all of the um, XPS foam um, to seal it so I can then prime it. And actually, when I've got this sand on, the other thing I might do is add a bit more um, debris. Especially timber and roof tiles that uh, I can lay on top of it, but the sand needs to be down first. There we go, uh, sanded. Ta da! Gotta let that dry. Adding that extra wood debris now, all I've done is I've put a few splats of um, Gorilla Glue on, and I'm taking just off cut some of the junk uh, bolster that I've got that uh, don't really want to go away, so. This building has had so much timber fall out of it that I'm just... Some of it is so soft, this bolster, that I'm able to tear it. Which gives some great uh, textures. And then to focus, cover up the fact that I've then used a load of Gorilla Glue there, I'm just going to drop a bunch more sand on top of that. And that'll just hope, hopefully just bond it all together. Um, which will look really cool multiple layers of junk and detritus then in these debris piles of stone, brick, timber rubble one way or another pretty neat uh. <laughs> don't want to overdo it but on the other hand we did want it to be a wrecked building, so. Right, that's the whole model covered in sand. Uh, the next stage is to seal all the XPS foam. I'm going to do that using Mod Podge. Uh, but as I'm going to be brushing XPS foam with Mod Podge all over the entire model, I might as well prime it at the same time. So I'm going to mix Mod Podge with. Uh, an art store black acrylic paint and that will prime the model at the same time as it's going to be sealed and then that way there it will hold the whole thing together it will get a priming undercoat and we'll be ready for the paint job yes getting close to finishing okay apologies 3d printer running um printing the building because that ages uh there it is in fact printing away um I kick-started a, a, some fantasy scenery project ages ago and I haven't got around to printing any of the buildings so we're going to see what it turns out like. Here's hoping, fingers crossed. Anyway, um, paint job, where were we? Oh yeah, here we are. Um, this is how far we got so far. Um, some base coats on basically. 
greys and browns, uh, primed, a lot of stonework done, uh, a basic dark brown, what's that burnt umber? Uh, yeah, burnt umber, used Windsor and Newton to cover our large areas and that kind of thing, um, and some of the woodwork done inside, and now I've just got to start picking out the details, dry brushing it all up, doing the roof, and doing the plaster work, and still loads of paint job to do, so um, uh, let's not stand around and sit about chatting any longer, let's um, do the next bit, um, which brickwork is mainly done, so I'm going to do messy dry brushing of brown. I think it's the next bit. Okay. Girls getting a brush in all the fiddly diddly bits is pretty tricky. Even a little one. Not this great big one. Uh, but uh, we're coming along. Uh, we've now got kind of clay tileage on the roof. What's left of it? Um, dry brush in the gardens, all the grounds and earth. And the woods work inside. <laughs> that we can't see. Um, it's kind of like coming on quite nicely too. And I was thinking about doing it all kind of burnt out as well, but I'm not, to be quite honest, I'm not entirely sure how to go about achieving that. Um, I've got to paint all the plaster on here and do the black timbers. In fact, I'm going to do the black timbers next and then I can paint the plaster. Um, so uh, it's going to be a pretty basic paint job. Um, and then colour is going to be added, of course, with. Um, the addition of plant life and what have you uh, growing over and taking over the whole thing so uh, yeah it's coming on it's gonna be all right I'm a happy chappy so more paint in progress uh, we got a base coat on most of this now one way or another the uh, plaster walls have been done so far with um, whatever the hell that color is more gas bone uh, which can get lightened up and up with white. I've got to do this bit here, I've done this bit here because I'm doing all the clod inside the walls there, the upper walls being made of what and daub and clod and like. So that needs to be dry brushed then paint around there. Um, so we're coming on, the, the paint process is tedious. Uh, everybody knows how much I love the painting bit of it. Um, so uh, yeah, we're getting there. I'm, I want to decide on the top for the walls outside. I might even paint them a a uh, matching tile colour to match the, the roofs, cut some uh, tops into them, that might look quite cool. Uh, what I really want to do is getting on with the uh, adding vegetation and garden and stuff and have it all overgrown and looking kind of cool from that point of view. But paint first, keep going, keep going. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, blimey Tim, those walls are looking a bit on the white side. Look, it's not bad. On the whole. Tops, walls, yeah. All we need now is a bit of seasoning. I think I'm going to hit the sepia and the uh, Agrax Earthshade to darken down and messy this up. And then we're going to do all the foliage and vegetation. <laughs> a bit young, so. All right. That's looking a bit better, more dirtier. Seraphine sepia has done the trick. Now, now is going to be the good bit because now I get to add vegetation, make this place look ruined and overgrown. Looking pretty cool, much better. Not all that nice, clean white now. No oil on the chimney stack. <laughs> Still soaking no oil on the inside walls as well. Give it a really grotty manky weathered kind of light look which is looking pretty cool now just gonna make the whole place overgrown uh, yeah here we go let's have a look at what we're going to use right so this is um, a selection of some of the things I'm going to use for vegetation and wilding up this thing uh, what have we got? We've got Pico static grass clumps with uh, stones and bits and pieces and we've also got just large big fat static grass growing up. That's going to go on, that would be quite useful. Uh, I have uh, a few turnips and cabbages, red and green cabbages and the like. They're going to be left over in the vegetable bed growing wild. Plus some different berries and bushes and things. Um, and then I've got I was given these, these are, I don't even know what they are, kind of 
floral thing. They're quite neat. They're going to spread around and they're going to cover in flock. Stick up the side of the building maybe. Have that growing wild. Uh, and then with clump vegetation on it, I think that will do quite nicely. Going up the back side of the building. Woodland scenic clump vegetation. Underbrush in this case. Um, different grades of that. And then I'll use... Oh, hang on. What's this? What's this? That's kind of like leaf mould scatter. That will go on in places as well. And I'm uh, going to use um, some general greens flock as well. Finish off around the edges. So this will be a bit of fun really, I think. I'm just going to stick on and see what happens. I want this bit model to look wild and overgrown like it's been a ruin for some time. So, uh, certainly months. So the cabbages and turnips maybe were just been planted when the whole place was wrecked. And now they're kind of like growing through, but everything else I want it to have that kind of like wild and slightly overgrown looking places although I don't want it to get in the way of the gaming possibilities so we'll uh, see what all this lot comes to. I'm going to use all purpose adhesives, stick a lot of this on uh, and in some cases uh, super glue uh, and then Mod Podge probably for the uh, um, dry scatter and uh, we'll see where that gets us to so okay so I've got Various things going on now. Uh, some kind of shrubby, bushy type tree thing climbing up and over the roof. We've got bushes, fruit bushes going out in flower, going out of control, climbing up the wall here. Tomato plants. We've got crops coming through. Uh, and various bits of rough, large grass around about the place. Looks pretty cool. Lots that I need to blow off. And then uh, the last part will be to add a general layer of grassy flock to cover up some of the mud so it's not all mud but actually on the whole it's looking pretty good from the front a few bits there I don't want to overdo it but I do want it to definitely look old and ruined and knackered so yeah we're adding a few more bits very very nearly there alright so that's the uh, flock on leaf scatter plants wild, growing wild it all looks um, pretty cool. I'm pretty much finished now. I can't decide if I should wash it again, make it look a bit more grim dark, or whether I'll leave it like that. It looks quite cool on the tabletop. There's the odd crack between the odd bit of XPS foam that could do with the odd bit of plant growing up, it, I suppose. But apart from that, ah, that's pretty neat. Kelly, I hope you like this. It's quite cool. Right. There we go, done, finished. It's there, here. You can't see it, I oh, know you can't see it, hang on. Wait a minute. Here we are. One finished ruined farmhouse for Silver Bayonet et al. Um, I'm really quite uh, pleased with it. Uh, I've got to admit, I, I know that I'm kind of pleased with it. I know when that happens because it then becomes one of those models that I've kind of really enjoyed making and also uh, I'm at the point where I'm going to be really sad to see it go. I've sat there and made it. I'll be really pleased to send it away and I can't wait to see it somewhere else being used. Kelly, when you get it and it gets on the table, I want, I want photographs, man. Um, but I'm sitting here already thinking, ah, oh, damn, I need to build one for myself now. Um, I could even see me building one for Silver Bayonet. I definitely, definitely could see the use of building something like this for burrows and badgers. Uh, lots of the scenarios in that game use ruins in the middle of a table. This would be a really perfect example for it. I've got some old ruin models that I made donkish years ago for Mordheim and Warhammer Skirmish, but they are very Warhammer and mordheim -y, and I don't really go with the table with the rest of my stuff for b, &B. Um, So yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with this. Uh, not sure entirely about the, the paint job, um, it looks fine, um, I think it looks pretty cool, you can check it out, and, uh, but I don't know whether it's grim dark enough, I don't know if this game is supposed to be grim dark, um, but you know, werewolves and vampires and, and zombies and, and revenants and all that kind of thing, it strikes me pretty grim dark, in my kind of like understanding of, of magic and, and the supernatural and the rest of it, I always think undead should be the scariest stuff. Um, so. It possibly could be darker and more worn, and I could have maybe done the whole thing in stone and 
Oh, and that could have been giving it a really dark look. But actually, I, I think it kind of works quite well. And I'm pretty sure it'll look really nice on the table. All right, let's have a talk about some of the features on this model, shall we? Um, I, there are bits of it I really, really like. And uh, they were good fun to make, and I hope that they kind of like meet Kelly's ideas of what he had in mind. It's always difficult when you build a model like this to get a compromise between what you've got in your mind and what you like to see, and what will be practical on the tabletop. The back garden is uh, a good example of this. Come down here, we'll have a look. No, come, come, come over here. Come over here, we'll have a look. Oh, for God's sake! I'll take some figures out of the way. Get, get them out of the way for a minute, and you can see what I'm talking about. Right. So the back garden then, we talked about having it all overgrown and, uh, and uh, um, a cottage garden kind of thing and uh, I've tried to get that as much as I can. I've started to get plants, let's have a look over here, growing up, reclaiming, growing out of there, growing up and onto the roof, which is quite nice. And then down here, these uh, bushes here with flowers on going up, crawling up around the doorway. And then other definite remains of cottage garden. The cabbages and the uh, uh, turnips there. Turnips? Are they? Aren't they? Aren't they? Um, growing through, they've been left there. And then all the other wreckage. Uh, and the, the whole garden is starting to kind of like get wild and grown over a bit. We've got large tufts of grass and that kind of thing. Uh, and fallen leaf matter all over the place, which is blown into the house. Which is all pretty cool. So, I probably could have gone to town a little bit more. Put more... Uh, covering on more uh, foliage and that kind of thing but the problem with then is it just starts to get in the way of, of interacting and, and the models and everything getting too much so from that point of view um, uh, I think I've probably got the balance about right it's the same with kind of like the piles of rubble you don't want massive great big piles of rubble you want piles of rubble that uh, clearly show piles of rubble but then um, you want to get enough so you can actually kind of again play across them quite well so I, I think these uh, do quite a good job there's a little vampire there look. oh bless you um, then with the wrecked floors and bits and pieces and windows there's enough room for uh, the troops to get in there and be used they all look pretty cool these are my Victorian red coats in home guard uniform which works quite well and some of the bigger holes in the walls are even neat for big weapons. Not that there are really big weapons in silver bayonet, no artillery and the like. However, if I was using this model and playing very British Civil War or something similar, great place. Check out this Gatling gun. Like it lots. And then in here, red coats sniping through the holes in the wall. Yeah, actually, I'm really quite pleased with this model. I like the cob, the wrecked walls here. Um, and then there's plenty of room inside to get figures in too. So there you go, that is a, a, a Magrathea Builder of Worlds Commission piece. It's a piece of scenery on a 12 inch uh, piece of board. Well, the board's a little bit bigger, it's about 13 by 13, but the piece of scenery itself is about 12 by 12. Um, and that one there was a uh, jolly good fun to make. That's kind of what I do. Most models I make for myself, but I do do some commission work, and in this case, this commission work was because it was won uh, on a competition, from a competition, in a competition, oh, I don't know, um, uh, from my Patreon page, uh, patreon.com slash worlds. Three times a year I run a competition. Uh, it's a design competition, an ideas competition. I choose my favourite idea or design and I build it for that person, that patron, and uh, they then get to keep it. It's cool, I think it's quite a good deal. And in this case, uh, Kelly in uh, uh, America came up with this idea for a room farmhouse for Silver Bayonet. That was the one I went with because I hadn't built anything for Silver Bayonet. And, um, it's been great fun to make. So if you would like a chance to win a piece of Magathea Builder World scenery, then you need to go and find my Patreon page, sign up there. The next Patreon competition is just around the corner. will be before the end of April 2022. So if you want to be in for a chance of winning that, then you need to jump on PDQ. Um, thank you very much for watching this video thank you i hope this video gets as much response as the video did beforehand the, in part one 
several thousand views in 48 hours or so, uh, which was absolutely brilliant for my little corner of YouTube. I was so pleased with that, and really, really pleased with the responses that people came up with. So from that point of view, thank you very much, uh, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this second part as much as the first part. If you have, please do leave likes and uh, comments down below. I always love to chat with the people who are watching my videos, and that's a really good way to do it. Um, and uh, if you've, you're new to Magathea Builder Worlds, and there have been quite a few new subscribers since the last video thank you very much then do click subscribe uh, and join my growing uh, community online i've had great fun doing this i'm not sure what the next model's going to be um oh, hang on a minute uh -huh. uh, it's highly likely to be the unfinished whimsical fantasy lighthouse for boroughs and badges i've got some other things that i really want to do as well though i really 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 must make some models for Judge Dredd. And I do want to get back into the Underhive and out on the Sump Sea and make some more stuff for Necromunda before Ash Wastes drops, which, oh, there's some really cool looking stuff there. Maybe for Ash Waste, but also, in many cases, for putting on the Sump Sea as well. So uh, that's going to be a really exciting development this year. We'll have to wait and see how that goes and see what kind of things I end up producing here on my channel. So, having said all of that, Thank you very much for watching Magathea Build All Worlds. I will see you next time. Now for the saucy bit. Apologies, as I've said before, I have no Napoleonic figures, but I have got figures that make this worthwhile. You've been watching some of them already. So here we go. Let's get a close-up of this model. See you next time.